Hey YouTubers, it's Dansky. So in this video, we're going to be looking at creating some UI elements that we can use in a website or an app. And in this video in particular, we're going to be looking at creating a button. Okay. So we're going to go up to our rectangle tool up here. And we're just going to draw something, a shape that resembles this kind of shape. And we'll just fill that with a color for now. And you can leave your button square edged or you can round off the corners. If you're using Adobe Illustrator CC or newer, you can drag these little dots into the corner to quickly round off the edges. Or you can go up to Effect, Stylize, down to Round Corners, Preview, and then just increase the radius until you get something you're happy with. And remember, if you do go up to Effect and Stylize, once you've got the right corner radius, you just want to go up to Object and Expand Appearance. Okay? So at the moment, your shape is like that. And when you go to Expand Appearance, it then kind of finalizes your shape. And now it is a shape with rounded corners. Okay? So we've created the outline shape for our button. What we're going to do next is we're just going to add a little kind of uh, kind of an inner shadow or an inner glow rather just on the along the top edge here. So if we just select this shape and go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place and holding shift, we're just going to move this out of the way. Just holding shift and clicking with the arrow keys and we're going to go to edit, no object, down to path and then offset path and we're going to offset the path by minus two so if i take the preview box and you can see if i change it to minus two it it just clips in to the shape by two pixels so if i do minus five you can see it just goes in a bit further but i think for what we want minus two is absolutely fine so you can click ok okay so now holding shift, we can move this one out. And what we're going to do is just go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place for the last time. And then we're just going to tap our arrow keys down twice. Okay. So if you press command Y on the Mac or control Y on the PC, you should have something that looks like this. Now what we need to do is select both of these shapes go up to our Pathfinder palette and then select minus front or subtract. And it will leave us with just this shape here. Now let's just make that red for the time being. We can delete this one in the middle and holding shift and using the arrow keys, we can just tap this one and it should snap right into place. Perfect. Okay, and now we can make that a different color. We can make that white for now. And what we're gonna do is we'll just put an opacity on that so let's say let's say 30 percent okay so now we're going to add an arrow to our button so if we just select our rectangle tool now holding shift we'll create a square we'll just make this black for the time being and then we can left click and hold select the polygon tool click anywhere on the artboard and we'll create a three-sided shape. And then using the scale and rotate tool, we can just rotate the triangle and then scale it down. And if you've got your smart guides turned on, that's view and smart guides down here, you should see these snap together with the green lines like so. And we can just select both shapes and then go up to here just snap them in line. So if they're out of line, let me just show you. It just snaps them in line. And then using the direct selection tool, I think we're just going to bring this anchor point in. So I'm holding shift to pull it straight horizontally. If I let go of shift, you'll see it goes all over the place. So we want to hold shift to keep it straight. Then you can do the same with by selecting these points as well. And we'll just bring those in. Okay. So I'm happy with this arrow. I want to convert these two shapes into one. So what I'm going to do is select both shapes and in the Pathfinder palette, I'm just going to click on Unite or Add. 
Okay, and you can see that becomes one shape. So now we can drag this onto our button. If we group this highlight along the top and the button themselves, because we, we're, fi we're finished with that position now, so we don't want to edit that again. And we can just select both of these elements and just click this again, just to make sure they're aligned. So if I throw it off for a second and click that, you can see again, it just snaps it nicely in place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create some text. So selecting our text tool over here and clicking anywhere on the artboard, we're just going to type subscribe in capitals. Select the font as Arial and bold. And just drag that onto our button. And then just maybe bring the arrow down a little bit just so it balances with the size of the lettering. And I think I might just bring the letters just a tad closer together. And you can leave this as an editable bit of text or you can select it and go to type, create outlines. And as you'll see now, it's become a shape rather than a font. So I can just bring this down a bit. And when you're happy, again, select both of these, align together, and go to object, group. So now this will move around as one unit. And we can do the same again. Select the whole composition and just align it. So it's these little details that will really help your design stand out and look a bit more professional, a bit more tidy. Just these little details, spacing things out and aligning things to one another. So again, I can do the same thing, but we can align it vertically this time. And you'll see we now have an equal amount of space either side on our button. And usually a bit of breathing space either side is definitely a good thing. Otherwise it tends to look a bit too, a bit too squashed together. Okay, so for the finishing touches, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the direct selection tool to select our button shape itself without having to ungroup anything. Um, we're going to create a gradient just to give this a little bit of depth. Okay. So first I'm going to edit my swatches. So I'm quite happy with this yellow here. This one is looking a little bit too punchy for me. So I'm going to select this swatch, change this to global, and I'm just going to adjust this color to something like that. And then I'm going to reselect the shape using the direct selection tool, and I'm going to just drag this updated color onto the brighter yellow. Okay, much better. And I want to rotate the gradient, so if we put 90 degrees in there, perfect. So now it runs from light through to the darker orangey yellow at the bottom. And you can flip this with this button here. Okay, and again, using the direct selection tool, I'm just going to add a stroke to this image as well. So I'm gonna select a, an orangey color here. I'm gonna make the stroke weight two, no, a little bit too thick, 1.5. Still too thick, let's go with 1.2. Perfect. And maybe just make that a little bit less orange, a bit more yellow. And then if I go up to color guide, I can darken it and lighten it here as well. Okay, perfect. So there we go, we've got two elements now. We've got our button itself all grouped together. Then we have the call to action, subscribe with the arrow. There's two separate elements. And once we've got everything and we're happy with our button, we can then select everything, go to object and group. And now we can use this as part of our responsive website or app composition as a button. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.